Hello money makers, my name is Paul Duplessy aka the EMS guy. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're starting with a new topic. We're talking about the price theory, supply and demand and then we're looking at market equilibrium. It's going to be an interesting video so hit like, subscribe, share and let's do this. Righto, so as we're talking about this, this topic of price theory, we're going to touch on three subtopics, which is demand, supply, and market equilibrium. Now, this is all, this is all to do with how price is formed in a market. If you look at um, a business setting out a price, let's say I've got a coffee shop, and I want to charge 20 Rand for a cappuccino. What will happen? I'll see my doors open and people will flock in because that's not market related pricing. People will think, yo, that's a cheap price. So there will be a big demand. People will want to have more coffee, all right? And I can control how much then I can sell because I don't want to run out of stock. So how to control a high demand is I will actually want to either increase my prices to lower their demand or I'll have to start selling alternative products um, to make sure that it's more evenly distributed. Why? Remember, we've got limited resources in our economy. So after this video, you'll be able to see how price is formed. So to understand that as a household, we have our needs, we have our wants, and we want to make sure that we satisfy those needs and wants to the best of our abilities with the limited resources we have. This is what we call our demand. So I want a car, I want a house. But I don't have all the money just to buy and um, throw money at. I need to spend it wisely. So I need to manage my demand for the product. On the business side, they want to supply, right? So a business wants to supply and the main aim of a business is to supply so much because they want to make money. But now we're going to see how different is supply versus demand. All right. So when we look at demand, demand refers to how much of a good or a service a customer or a consumer wants that they're willing and able to pay for, right? And this is shown in a relationship between price and quantity. Now we'll be drawing that in a short while, but there's two parts to it. It's a quantity available and demanded at a specific price. Therefore, we can define it as it's a different quantities of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to pay for at a specific price during a specific time. So there's a law that we need to know about demand. The law of demand says the demand for a product will increase, go up, if the price goes down. Think about this. If you go into a mall and you see prices reduced, lower prices, sales, you would run there. Why? You immediately know I'm going to pay less. So now my demand has increased. I want to buy more at a low price. If ice cream costs 10 rand, but now I sell it for 5 rand. First thing we would ask is how much do you have or what's wrong with it? All right. But first thing is we would always want to increase our quantity if there's nothing wrong with quality. So that's the law of demand. The higher the price, the lower the demand or the lower the price, the higher the demand for a quantity. Do we call that the inverse relationship? Now, there's certain factors that will influence this. This is, for example, the price of the product. We just discussed that. Second factor is the price of related goods. For example, if I sell bread, but someone else sells um, butter or jam and cheese, then there's specific related products and that can have a massive influence on whether my demand for butter will go up, whether I sell jam and cheese. Then another factor is the income. If the consumers have less income, that means they won't be able to buy as much as they want to. Also, their taste influences their decision. If it's this year, I feel like I love fig jam, then I'm not going to buy apricot jam. Then my demand for apricot jam will decrease. And the last one is the size of the household. If I've got a family of four, my demand will be different than if I only live um, alone. So at the bottom, you can see how a uh, law of demand looks like. And the graph, remember, it's always on two axes. The Y axis is your vertical. That's always your price. The X axis is your horizontal. And that's your quantity. And you can see as the, the higher the price, the lower the quantity. And that's the law of demand. All right. Now, on the other hand, we have 
uh, this is just a demand schedule to explain maybe I can quickly do this the demand schedule says at the price of 15 rand I will demand 20 units that's my need but at 5 rand I want to buy 30 units right so you can see in this inverse relationship um, at A it's the price is at 15 rand and 20 units B is at 10 rand and 25 units and C is at 5 rand and 30 units there you can draw your line that's quite easy now the next one is um, just an example for you to try and um, practice at home to see if you can draw this um, schedule and we'll use one uh, follow-up video to draw this quickly with you supply is the total opposite of demand supply is where the business says how will I supply how much will I supply why my focus is on making money so I want to supply more at a higher price because that's a higher profit and the less money I make the less I want to supply because it's not profitable so it's the different quantities of a good or service that suppliers are willing and able to supply at a specific price during a specific time so the law says the supply or the quantity supply for a product will increase if the price increases now that's a direct relationship if it increases my if the price increases my quantity supplied will also increase okay if my price decrease then my supply will also decrease so you can see there's a direct relationship so what factors influence supply it's also the price of the product if there's a higher market price I would want to supply more items if there's substitute products now this is not related like in demand but substitute says if I have butter but now I have margarine the two are used for the same purpose almost but you can use one or the other so it depends on what's the prices of the other items that will influence the supply the price of factors of production that's your input cost how much does it cost to produce remember if it costs too much then my profit decreases then my supply will be less expected future prices we're currently in a realm in South Africa where the prices we're expecting a high inflation increase so uh, they're forecasting their future prices especially with um, flour and um, cooking oil so that's got the influence on their supply currently in order to spread it out over a longer period and then lastly the technology available to producers because if they can produce it cheaper that means they can make more money that means they will supply more okay so also in the example of a supply schedule and a graph you can see at the price of 15 rand I want to supply 30 units but at the price of 5 rand I'll only supply 20 units now you can see it's two different graphs at for demand and supply and you'll see there's an intersection but when we intersect supply and demand where consumers come in with the businesses we get market equilibrium this is the reflection of the what happens in the market where people say okay this is the price that I actually want to buy it at and suppliers are willing to sell it for that price so this is reflected in where market demand and supply intersects this is market equilibrium all right so we can define it as it's when quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied and we call that the equilibrium price and it's where the quantity demanded now if the demand is greater than the supply right that means there's an excess in demand and there's a shortage in the market so let's say if I want more butter but the producers are not supplying as much as what I need then there's a shortage in the market if the consumers want more than what's supplied then there's a shortage the opposite is also true if the quantity supplied is greater than the demand then there's an excess supply and that means there's a surplus in the market so we need to be mindful of these things now this is the market equilibrium slide to see um, uh, the yellow is the quantity supplied at 15 rand we will have 30 units whereas quantity demand is on the green at 15 rand we'll have 20 units we'll draw our two intersections or two line graphs and where they intersect is what we call market equilibrium so make sure you watch the uh, practical video next to see how it is done let's shift our education